Paul Karl Feyerabend was an Austrian-born philosopher of science best known for his work as a professor of philosophy at the University of California, Berkeley, where he worked for three decades. At various different points in his life, he lived in England, the United States, New Zealand, Italy, Germany, and finally Switzerland. His major works include Against Method, Science in a Free Society and Farewell to Reason. Feyerabend became famous for his purportedly anarchistic view of science and his rejection of the existence of universal methodological rules. He is an influential figure in the philosophy of science, and also in the sociology of scientific knowledge. Biography Early life Paul Feyerabend was born in 1924 in Vienna, where he attended primary and high school. In this period he got into the habit of frequent reading, developed an interest in theater, and started singing lessons. After graduating from high school in April 1942 he was drafted into the German Arbeitsdienst. After basic training in Piemsens, Germany, he was assigned to a unit in Quellen en Bar, near Brest. Feyerabend described the work he did during that period as monotonous. We moved around in the countryside, dug ditches, and filled them up again. After a short leave he joined the army and volunteered for officer school. In his autobiography he writes that he hoped the war would be over by the time he had finished his education as an officer. This turned out not to be the case. From December 1943 on, he served as an officer on the northern part of the Eastern Front, was decorated with an Iron Cross and attained the rank of lieutenant. When the German army started its retreat from the advancing Red Army, Feyerabend was hit by three bullets while directing traffic. One bullet hit him in the spine. As a consequence he needed to walk with a stick for the rest of his life and frequently experienced severe pain. He spent the rest of the war recovering from his wounds. Post-World War II on university when the war was over, Feyerabend first got a temporary job in a polder where he wrote pieces for the theatre. He was influenced by the Marxist playwright Bertolt Brecht and was invited by Brecht to be his assistant at the East Berlin State Opera but turned down the offer. Feyerabend took various classes at the Weimar Academy and returned to Vienna to study history and sociology. He became dissatisfied, however, and soon transferred to physics, where he met Felix Ehrenhaft, a physicist whose experiments would influence his later views on the nature of science. Feyerabend changed the subject of his study to philosophy and submitted his final thesis on observation sentences. In his autobiography, he described his philosophical views during this time as staunchly empiricist. In 1948 he visited the first meeting of the International Summer Seminar of the Austrian College Society in Altbach. There Feyerabend first met Karl Popper, who had a positive, as well as, negative, effect on him. In 1949 he was a founding member of the Kraft Circle. In 1951, Feyerabend was granted a British Council scholarship to study under Wittgenstein. However, Wittgenstein died before Feyerabend moved to England. Feyerabend then chose Popper as his supervisor instead, and went to study at the London School of Economics in 1952. In his autobiography, Feyerabend explains that during this time, he was influenced by Popper. I had fallen for Popper's ideas. After that, Feyerabend returned to Vienna and was involved in various projects, a translation of Karl Popper's Open Society and Its Enemies. Hunting down manuscripts Popper had left in Vienna, a report on the development of the humanities in Austria, and several articles for an encyclopedia. Academia In 1955, Feyerabend received his first academic appointment at the University of Bristol, where he gave lectures about the philosophy of science. Later in his life he worked as a professor at Berkeley, Auckland, Sussex, Yale, London, Berlin and Eth Zurich. During this time, he developed a critical view of science, which he later described as anarchistic or dadaistic to illustrate his rejection of the dogmatic use of rules. 
a position incompatible with the contemporary rationalistic culture in the philosophy of science. At the London School of Economics, Firebend met a colleague of K.R. Popper, Imre Larkatos with whom he planned to write a dialogue volume in which Larkatos would defend a rationalist view of science and Firebend would attack it. This planned joint publication was put to an end by Lakatos's sudden death in 1974. Against method became a famous criticism of current philosophical views of science and provoked many reactions. In his autobiography, he reveals that the energy in his writings came at great cost to himself. The depression stayed with me for over a year, it was like an animal, a well-defined, spatially localizable thing. I would wake up, open my eyes, listen, is it here or isn't? No sign of it. Perhaps it's asleep. Perhaps it will leave me alone today. Carefully, very carefully, I get out of bed. All is quiet. I go to the kitchen, start breakfast. Not a sound. TV, Good Morning America, David what's his name, a guy the first can't stand. I eat and watch the guests. Slowly the food fills my stomach and gives me strength. Now a quick excursion to the bathroom, and out for my morning walk, and here she is, my faithful depression. Did you think you could leave without me? From his autobiography, Killing Time Firebend moved to the University of California. Berkeley in California in 1958 and became a U.S. citizen. Following professorships at University College London, Berlin, and Yale, he taught at the University of Auckland, New Zealand in 1972 and 1974, always returning to California. He later enjoyed alternating between posts at ETH Zurich and Berkeley through the 1980s but left Berkeley for good in October 1989, first to Italy, then finally to Zurich. After his retirement in 1991, Firebend continued to publish frequent papers and worked on his autobiography. After a short period of suffering from a brain tumor, he died in 1994 at the Genolia Clinic, overlooking Lake Geneva, Switzerland.